We come together today in our separate places to celebrate Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not consider being equal with God something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself completely, not only taking on human form, but the form of a servant. He humbled himself, being obedient to the point of death, even a humiliating death by torture on a cross of wood. So God raised him up with great honor and gave him a name that is above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven and on earth and under the earth might bow down and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is our God, the God that we have come to worship. Let us pray. God of incredible surprises, as we gaze into the clouds, remind us that we are standing on holy ground. Place our feet on the pathways of peace and hope. Draw our attention from the vision of the Lord rising to the heavens to be with you, and help us to focus on the ministries that you would have us do. Keep us ready and willing always to serve you all our days as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. What an honor and a blessing it is to have graduating seniors to celebrate. This year we have a total of five graduates, including four high school seniors and one college graduate. I'm Jayla Franklin. I am graduating from Tascosa High School. I plan to attend Amarillo College and West Texas A&M University to major in kinesiology. Hi, my name is Grace Ingham. I am a graduate of Tascosa High School and I will be attending the University of Texas at Austin in the fall. Hi, I'm a 2020 graduate from Tascosa High School. My name is Madison Moon, and I planned on uh, attending Amarillo College in the spring for a surgical technician. Hi, I'm Mohamed Nusa. I'm graduating from Cap Rock High School. I plan to attend AC, then transfer to Texas Tech to, to pursue in pharmacy. My plan is to then do internship and proceed to achieve my white coat. Uh, I've gone to FCC for a while, and I want to say I love the congregation and everyone in it. I haven't met them personally, but I know they're great people that have helped me personally in any way possible. 
Hi, my name is Madison Showalter. I graduated from WT in early childhood education. I am working toward my certification and until then I will be working as a TA in either Dallas ISD or Canyon Amarillo ISD. Please join me in prayer as we lift up these seniors. Dear God, we pray for our graduates today and we lift them up before you. We thank you so much for these whom we love and for the work that you're continuing to do in their lives. They are a gift to us and to many others. During this season of new beginnings, we ask that you would make their way clear. We ask that you would keep their footsteps firm and remind them that you are always with them. May they sense the freshness of your spirit over their lives in amazing ways. May they be strengthened, instilled with hope, uh, for new roads that you have in store for them. We pray for protection that you would surround their lives with your presence, protecting their coming and going. Our world is currently anxious and fearful and uncertain, and we pray for our graduates that you would fill them with your courage and your strength, that, may, that they may be a light to their friends and neighbors in an uncertain time. We ask that you would remind them every day just how much you love them, that they would find security and confidence fully in you, knowing that you are trustworthy and true in every way. We pray for uh, that you would surround them with friends and leaders who would challenge them and uh, press them closer to you. We ask that you would raise up greatness in their lives, greatness in this generation, willing to stand strong and true and passionate for you, believing that you have designed them for your purpose and for good works. Be a lamp to their feet and a light to their path. Shine over them. Fill them with your spirit. Bless them with your favor and your presence. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Congratulations, seniors. We're proud of you. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, we want to be uh, especially mindful of uh, Stephanie Smith and the uh, all of her family on the passing this past week of Stephanie's father. And though we grieve with this family, as always, we do not grieve as those who have no hope, because we do, through our Lord Jesus Christ, have the promise of resurrection. We also, on this Memorial Day weekend, are mindful uh, and grateful for all of those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our nation, that we might have the freedoms that we share. Let us join together now in the spirit of prayer and let us begin our praying in silence. We give thanks to you, O God, in this and in every age for the healing power at work in Christ to fill our world with grace. We pray for our world, for all leaders, peoples, and nations, that they may exercise a spirit of wisdom as they serve the common good. Shield all who suffer from the terrors of violence and war. Bring them safely we give thanks to you, O God, in this and in every age, for the healing power at work in Christ. We pray for our nation. Nope, start again. We give thanks to you, O God, in this and in every age, for the healing power at work in Christ to fill our world with grace. We pray for our world, for all our leaders, all peoples, and all nations, that they may exercise a spirit of wisdom 
as they serve the common good. Shield all who suffer from the terrors of violence and war. Bring them to safety and new life in you. Make us one human family, gathered up in your love and clothed in the power of your peace. We pray for all who long to experience the immeasurable power of your love. Open our hearts to sing your praises and to share the story of your blessing, that all may come to know our living and ascended Christ. Bless your people everywhere with food, shelter, health care, and employment sufficient for our flourishing that all may thrive together by the riches of your grace and fill us with a joy for justice that inspires us to do our part for the prosperity of all. We pray for all who are sick or in need, that they may know your healing love and the power of Christ to bring life in even the most difficult times. Keep us mindful of the hope and the great power that we have in you as we offer your healing to others. All this we pray in the name of the one who was raised to live and reign in power for us, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Acts 1, 6 through 14. Then the apostles gathered around Jesus and asked him a question. Lord, they said, are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel now? He said to them, you should not be concerned about times or dates. The Father has set them by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. After Jesus said this, he was taken up to heaven. The apostles watched until a cloud hid him from their sight. While he was going up, they kept on looking at the sky. Suddenly, two men dressed in white clothing stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. The apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. It is just over half a mile from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew were there. Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew were there too. So were James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all came together regularly to pray. The women joined them too. So did Jesus' mother, Mary, and his brothers. Waiting. Waiting. It's something we all do, right? And it's something, if we're honest, that we all do a lot. So I did a little research and found a a survey that was done by the Timex company, the watchmakers, that that had some interesting uh, stats about waiting. For instance, did you know that according to this survey, uh, the average American will spend 32 minutes waiting for a doctor each visit. So if we look at that, then that's, uh, if, if you go to the doctor one time a year, then you're looking at over the course of your lifetime, somewhere between 30 and 35 hours of waiting to visit 
the doctor if you only go once a year. When traveling, the average American will spend 28 minutes in security lines. Sometimes it seems desperately longer than that. Each year, the average American will spend 13 hours waiting on hold for customer service. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, yeah. Now, if you take that over the course of a lifetime, you're talking about like 43 days of your life spent on hold for customer service. But wait, it gets worse. Each year, the average American spends 38 hours waiting in traffic. And as you get into some of the larger metropolitan areas, that number shoots up to 50 or even higher. But we'll go with 38. 38 hours each year waiting in traffic. Over the course of a lifetime, that's four months spent waiting in traffic. Another survey I saw said that uh, the average person spends 20 minutes per day on the toilet. Now, if you break that out over the course of a lifetime, that's more than one year of your life spent on the toilet. We all have to wait, don't we? The disciples in our story had to wait. They had been waiting their whole lives for uh, Messiah to come and to uh, restore the kingdom of Israel. They had found the Messiah in Jesus watched as he was crucified, waited until the resurrection when they saw him again, spent 40 days in the Gospel of Luke, uh, 40 days after the resurrection in which Jesus taught, uh, continued to teach them and prepare them for the mission he had for them. And then... We come to the 40th day, the day of ascension. And they ask the question, Lord, is this the time? Is this the time? We've been waiting. So this is it, right? When you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel. And Jesus essentially says, yeah, that's not what I need you to worry about. That's not your task. That's not what, uh, that's not what I, I need you to be focused on right now. And he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. In other words, what Jesus says is, wait. Don't worry about timing. Just wait. And when the time comes, you will know. And then he says that when this power comes, that the disciples will be uh, his witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Just a real quick aside on, do you notice that how that geography works? In Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It's like concentric circles. In other words, what he's saying is you're going to start where you are. You're going to start where you are being witnesses to all that you have seen and all that you have discovered that I am. You're going to start where you are. And only later will you expand out. And then after he had said this, a cloud came and took him up out of their sight. And as the disciples stand there looking and watching, probably mouths agape in, a, in amazement or disbelief or, or just flat out uncertainty, two robed men, who we might call angels or messengers, came and stood among them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? In other words, what are you doing? He's told you what to do. Now get busy 
waiting. <laughs> so then they returned to Jerusalem and were told in Acts that they, uh, during this time, they were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. Luke's gospel tells, uh, recounts this story. Luke and Acts are, are almost certainly written by the same author. And so the way the story goes at the Luke of Acts, it says that they return to Jerusalem with joy. So they are joyfully in prayer, devoting themselves to prayer during this time. Not just the 11 disciples, uh, but also many others, including certain women, including uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, we're told. But in their waiting, they commit themselves to prayer. When I find myself having to wait, now, specifically thinking in lines, not so much in traffic or, or anything that might make this dangerous, I have, uh, but when I'm stuck waiting, I have some games on my phone that I like to play. Uh, I won't tell you how many hours I spend because I don't really want to do the math on that. But nonetheless, I, our phones, our smartphones especially, have given us a way to sort of fill that time when we're waiting. Waiting in line to renew your driver's license. Well, you pull out your phone and you can check your email. You can scroll through the news. You can play a game. The possibilities are almost endless. We find ourselves waiting now, don't we? We find ourselves waiting for uh, this time of pandemic, for this uh, 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 coronavirus thing to be done with so we can get back to life as normal, although I don't think normal or at least what it used to be defined as, will never be a thing again. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is what are we doing while we wait? The example of the disciples is that they were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. Now that doesn't mean that that was the only thing they did. Obviously they... Uh, had meals. Obviously, they spent their 20 minutes a day on the toilet. Uh, they would have still lived life, but in every moment they could, they devoted themselves to prayer. What are we devoting ourselves to in this period of waiting? Many people have devoted themselves to learning a new, uh, a new skill or a new hobby uh, many people have devoted themselves to uh, home improvements or, or craft projects, do-it-yourself type things. Uh, I've seen gardens. I've seen people cleaning out houses, and all of these are good things. But where does God fit into your waiting? Where does God fit in in this process of waiting? I guess what I'm asking is, have we devoted ourselves to prayer during this time? Have we taken the opportunities that we have to open the Word of God and not just read it, but study it and, and seek to understand it as best we can and ask ourselves, what does this mean for me? Have we taken the opportunity not just to pray, but to explore new and different ways to pray? That when this time of, of, of pandemic is over, we can carry into our lives after that. Prayer doesn't mean, uh, prayer doesn't just mean that we stop everything we're doing and you close your eyes and bow your head and fold your hands and, and talk to God. And then when you're done talking, you uh, end the conversation, usually with the word, Amen. 
No, prayer, my friends, is a conversation, or at least it should be. And so an equally important part of prayer, uh, uh, not just lifting uh, up our own prayers, but just as, just as important is the listening for what comes back. Now, it's not going to be an audible voice, most likely, but it could be a sense of peace. It could be, you know, that's not what I need you to focus on right now. Right now, just wait. I have some wonderful prayer resources, and I'm going to put those in the chat feature uh, of this worship service, uh, a couple that you can link to and check out. And uh, these are ones that have been very meaningful uh, for me in those moments when, uh, when I have this time that, that I could feel with so many things. And, and often I'll, I'll use some of these while I'm driving. Now, a caution of praying while driving, that's not the time to close your eyes and bow your head. But maybe, just maybe, that 5, 10, 15 minute trip you have to work in the morning, home in the afternoon, to the grocery store, wherever it is, maybe that short time, you can turn off your radio. Don't play your music. And just have that opportunity to talk to God, and just as important, to listen for God. So what do we do while we wait? I challenge you. I encourage you. I implore you while we wait for whatever is next to spend time in prayer to devote yourselves constantly to prayer. Finding those opportunities throughout your day to just stop and be silent before God. And when all of this is over, we will, each of us, have strengthened our relationship with God, will have strengthened our understanding of who God is so that we too might be prepared to be witnesses to God, for God, beginning right where we are. Thanks be to God. Amen.
book of Acts, which is the second volume to Luke's gospel, reintroduces the disciples just after Jesus ascends into heaven. This group had traveled with Jesus, had seen him crucified, and experienced the resurrected Christ over the weeks since that first Easter. And now the eleven were in an upper room back in Jerusalem along with others. Together, this group shared in life, devoting themselves to prayer and becoming witnesses whose testimony would reach the ends of the earth. They are our models today for the communion that we know is possible. Even when we're separated in body because of the coronavirus pandemic, we are one body in Jesus Christ. No better way to demonstrate our connection than to share in remembrance of Jesus. Long ago, Jesus took what was there at the dinner table, reinvesting the matzo and the wine with new meaning. Today, we use whatever elements are available to us and remember Jesus in our eating and drinking. So I invite you to take your bread, cracker, your cookie, whatever you have available, and join me in breaking it. And in breaking this, remember Jesus, whose body was broken for us. And take your juice, your wine, your milk and honey, whatever you have, and as you drink, remember Jesus who poured out his life that we might know eternal life. Let these elements be at work in your body and your life, that you may speak the truth as witnesses of the life we know in Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you to examine my heart today 
Show me anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering my relationship with you. As I take the bread representing your life that was broken for me, I remember and celebrate your faithfulness to me, to all who will receive you. Bless the bread, Lord. Thank you for your death that gave me life, abundant life now and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, I too receive this bread in remembrance of you. Amen. As we continue our prayer, Father, Lifting high the cup of Christ, we remember his shed blood, which washes away our sins, indeed, the sins of the whole world. Make us ever mindful of the infinite cost to you to purchase our deliverance. For this and for your glorious majesty, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to be faithful. Remain committed. Be witnesses for Christ. For the God of all grace has called you to eternal glory through Jesus Christ and will fulfill, restore, strengthen, and establish you through suffering and struggle. Be empowered by Christ's love, keeping Christ's name on your lips the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in your mind, God's love in your hearts, God's beloved ones always in your sight, and God's always speaking voice in your ear. Amen. Thank you. 